boost for the government and the economy today with inflation coming in below expectations, market expectations. The annual rate is still 4.9% though, so it's cooling way above where it's meant to be between 2 and 3%. How are we tracking Australia compared to the rest of the world? Let's have a look here. The United States and the UK. So the UK here is the worst story in terms of inflation. You can see this is only the last five months, by the way. In June, it was 8%. It's coming down pretty steadily still, though, at 45 The US there has been actually below 4% through all that time, albeit it's bouncing around a bit. Uh, when we look at New Zealand and Canada and how they're going, and Canada's quite a similar economy to Australia in terms of population, strong mining as well, there's Canada. So a similar path there to the US, as you can see, and just slightly lower. New Zealand is higher, stubbornly higher, and not coming down quickly enough. So where does Australia fit in in these last five months in terms of where we're headed on monthly inflation? As you can see, this was the worry point because Australia was coming down, and as of July, the expectation was we're on a steady journey down in terms of inflation. A bump up there, and we're coming up towards September, we're going above 5% there. This will be the encouragement for the Australian government that it's back here trending downwards, albeit not in the sort of areas of the, the US and Canada. What about the interest rates of these countries? How much have had to increase them post-COVID? Well, this is interesting. Five and a half for New Zealand, for example. So New Zealand right now are talking about possibly needing more interest rate hikes. Clearly, they don't have a good control on inflation. Next, we see Australia, 4.35. It's a lot lower than all the others. We also have much higher household debt per person compared to the rest of the countries, nearly double the US. So in other words, our rate hikes should have more an effect. So we are lower, but we are talking about possible hikes to continue getting inflation down. The UK is in the worst position. Yes, you can see inflation there is starting to moderate, but they're not having any more talk of rate hikes because the economy is not going well. Growth is tanking. So the UK simply can't hike rates anymore because it would hurt the economy, even though it would like to, to get inflation under control. Then you get down to the US, which is actually talking about rate cuts because the economy's going well enough, so they're in a pretty good position. And Canada, on a bit of a tipping point, but they're saying we'll keep steady for a while at 5% and inflation's moderating. It's just above 3%, both of these nations. So going, they're in the best position, if you like. You wouldn't want to be the UK. I think Australia would say it's in a slightly better position than New Zealand as well. So that's our path at the moment. What about how we're going compared to what the budget predicted we would? and compared to this monthly data and quarterly data. So in terms of inflation, the forecast first reality, the blue line is where the budget said we would be. So at 6% at the budget, it said by the middle of 2024, we'd be going from 6 down to 3.75. That's still above target. And eventually over the following year, we finally get below target inflation, which is between 2 and 3%. This is 2.75%. The worry initially is this spike up here. So we saw monthly come down, this is going well below that blue line, if you like, you want to be on. We saw it spike up, and the concern was, does it go higher? Does the red, and that's quarterly inflation, which is more accurate, does that start to dip up? Are we not on track? And that's why this monthly figure was important, because it feeds into the red number as well. That's the quarterly inflation that's more accurate. The caveat here is this yellow one that spikes down, not a lot of services data was in that, and that has been a driver of inflation. So this is where we want to be, continuing on this blue line or a little bit lower, if we keep bouncing around, we're going to struggle to get on that figure and moderate inflation down. If we do get more of a consistent pattern, especially on that red quarterly, the RBA can say they are on track.